Hey guys, we got a really fun problem today and one that we will see throughout the rest of this theory and in plenty of laboratory experiments. All right, so our statement reads, find a magnetic field at point P on the axis of a tightly wound solenoid helical coil consisting of N turns per unit length wrapped around a cylindrical tube of radius A carrying current I. Express your answer in terms of theta 1 and theta 2. It's easiest that way. Consider the turns to be essentially circular and use the results of the circular loop. What is the field on the axis of an infinite solenoid? Infinite in both directions. All right, before we get into any of the no's, let's uh, look at the diagram. So we have some point P here uh, to the right where theta 1 and theta 2 are descriptive of what's going on at the top and bottom below the axis that splits the solenoid in the cylindrical uh, shell at radius A. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, so although we were given the solution, the diagram as such, uh, for the solution, we'll go ahead and redraw based on what we need to know for the integral expressions used in the previous example. Uh, script R is from the point P to some point that we're observing, right? Point to source. Um, and theta, again, is on the axis. Uh, radius A. And Z is some given length, right? So we put the axis running down the center of the cylinder. And DZ is some infinitesimal small amount of the solenoid. And what we can do is modify the result of the loop current by adding up these tiny DZ segments. So the field of a circular loop is given as b equal mu naught i over 2 times r squared divided by r squared plus z squared to the 3s power. Again, that's how we just work with the script r, same thing we did with the electrostatics. But for the scenario, we know that the ring is of width dz, and thus the current is going to be n times dz times i, the modification anyways. So when we plug this in, that means we need to integrate out this uh, magnetic field with respect to dz. So we plug all these modifications in and end up with b equal mu naught and i divided by 2. The integral of a squared divided by a squared plus z squared to 3 halves times dz. But for this geometry where we're given thetas and such, what is z and dz? So we know that uh, from this geometry and going back to our basic trig functions, tangent would have equaled A over Z. So cotangent equals Z over A. Solve that for Z and we get Z equal A cotangent theta. Take the derivative. We get DZ equal A times negative 1 over sine squared theta times D theta, right? Um, but also the same question could be asked, what is sine theta? This is twofold. Uh, what we're trying to do is extrapolate out so we can get that uh, a squared plus z squared term in the denominator. And since that looks like the square root of a distance, which is a hypotenuse in this case, or the script r, we can write that in terms of sine. So sine theta equals a over a squared plus z squared to the one half. So if we solve, uh, if we divide a, we get the denominator we have in the uh, integral. Uh, so that leaves us with sine theta over a, and we would need to cube it in order to get to the 3 halves power for the a squared plus z squared term. So the one I have cubed that, you get 3 halves. So that leaves us with sine cubed theta over a cubed theta, and dz is equal to a over sine, negative a over sine squared theta d theta. So we put this all together, and we get a squared is just a constant, so it stays. We replace the uh, 1 over uh, a squared plus c squared to 3 halves with sine cubed theta a cubed. And then we put in for dz, negative a over sine squared theta d theta. We notice that upon simplifying it in the next step, a lot of things cancel. That entire denominator cancels with parts of the numerator. A cubes cancel, which is weird considering that we would have thought that the radius is matter here but in fact they don't thank you geometry and symmetry um but notice that we are still left with one factor of sine so we have to integrate that from uh theta one to theta two 
pretty quick antiderivative and evaluation, leaving us with mu not I, mu not n i divided by two cosine theta two minus cosine theta one. Pretty similar to some other results we found. Uh, but in the case of the infinite solenoid, theta two would equal zero, and theta one would equal pi. Plugged them in, and we get that uh, b equal mu not n i. Really simple, really compact, and guess what? When we're working in labs, these are really easy to build, and they produce really strong magnetic fields because we can get a lot of turns in there in these solenoids. I know when I was in it, uh, advanced labs and stuff like that, they would use these consistently with uh, material science and things of that nature. So this is a really cool result to have.